Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to you're going to need it. We have finished doing almost all the problems from here. If there is any problem at all that you have trouble with, if you wish to watch the solution to that problem, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from this book from day number 251 through 400. From 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain, in most cases, exactly the same problem and again in most cases appearing exactly on the same page numbers as the ones that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from the first edition. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. From day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are a very important part of the exam. They have not gone away. They are still a big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately for us, the newer books, the revised GRE books that I just showed you, do not provide us with enough practice problem for quantitative comparison questions. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison questions out of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. We are right now on page number 327. Please turn to it, page number 327, problem number 7. The very first problem that you see there in the second column. The problem is already on the blackboard. Here's what the problem says. It says, Problem number seven, 74% of the people had no trouble with it. Problem number seven, it goes like this. It says, Carol is, Carol is three centimeters tall. Carol, the person Carol is three centimeters tall. And we are told that Diane is D centimeters shorter than Carol. This underscoring that you see there is not done by me. This is how it appeared in the exam. We are told that Diane is, Diane is D centimeter shorter than Carol. What we are being asked to compare are the two quantities, the, the sum of their heights and 2 times c centimeters. I am going to be quiet now, I am going to give you 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video, do the problems yourself first and then, then compare your work against the work that we will do together in a few seconds. Do you understand? Here we go. Oh, here we go then. Before I completely forget it and before we get into the problem, I just used a word, I said that this underscoring that you see there is not done by me. This is exactly how it appeared in the exam. What does it mean to underscore? Do we know? What does it mean to underscore? Underscore is something that we learned in our vocabulary lessons long time ago. In our vocabulary lessons on day number 12. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you wouldn't be, if you want to get a decent score in the English portion, watch the vocabulary videos, just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 12, and watch that video where you will learn the word underscore. Underscore means to underline, to underline. This unders underscoring, this underlining that you see here is not done by me. This is exactly how it appeared in the exam. To underscore means to accentuate something, to emphasize something, to bring out, to bring, bring attention to something, to, to, to underline something. That's what it is. So what's the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the verdict here? Well, the simplest and the quickest way to tackle this problem is to simply make up the numbers. That's exactly what we're going to do here. Just make up the numbers for their height. Carol, we are told, is C centimeters tall. I'm going to pretend Carol is 100 centimeter tall. And then they go on to tell us that Diane is D centimeters shorter. Well, Diane is D centimeters shorter. Let's make up a number for it. I'm going to pretend that she's, she's 10 centimeters shorter than, Di than, than Carol. Do you understand? The numbers don't have to be realistic. Okay, it's okay. That's it, we're done. Now we look at their sum. So Carol plus Diane is what we're interested in. Carol, we know, is 100 centimeter tall. And Diane, it tells us, is D centimeter shorter than Carol. If she is 10 centimeter, if she is 10 centimeter shorter than Carol, then Diane must be 90. So we have 190 versus 2 times C, 2 times C, which is 100. We plug in, we plug in 100 for C. So it's 2 times C, which is 100. 
So we're comparing 190 versus 200, and of course 200 is bigger. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's do number 8. Question number 8, the next one. Question number 8 is a geometry question. Pretty straightforward question actually it is. And how do we know it's a very straightforward one? Well, the percentile tells us that three quarters of the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. Here's what we're given. We are told that this is x degrees, we are told that this angle is y degrees, and we are told that this angle is z degrees. What we are being asked to compare are two columns, column A, column B, column, column B we have 150, and in column X, A we have x plus y plus z. Well, how do we find out the sum of x, y, and z? It's very simple, very straightforward, but we have to understand the concept that they're testing here. The concept that they're testing here is a very simple concept in geometry. What is known as vertical angles. Sometimes these are referred to as opposite angles. And opposite angles we know are equal. Opposite angles are equal. So if this is z, if this is z degrees, if this angle is z degrees, then so is this. They are equal to each other. This is also z. If this is x, then so is this one, x, this is x degrees. If this is y, then so is this one, this is also y degrees. And now we look at this triangle here, right here, there's a triangle here. And what do we know about the sum of the angles in a triangle? Sum of the angles in a triangle has to add up to 180, which means x plus y plus z has, a, has to add up to 180. x plus y plus z has to add up to 180. 180 versus 150, 180 is bigger, the answer is A. Number 9. Number 9. The very last problem on the page, question number 9. Here we go. Make sure you pause the video and do it yourself. As always, I remind you. Or sometimes I forget to remind you, but you should do that yourself instinctively. We are told that N equals 105.873. What we are being asked to compare are these two quantities. N times 10 raised to 3 over 10 raised to 5 versus 1. This is our column B. This is our column A. One more time, I'm going to read it to you and then I'm going to get out of your way. I want you to pause the video, solve the problem yourself, and then compare your work against the work we, do, we will do together in a few seconds. N, we are told, is 105.873. N times 10 raised to 3 divided by 10 raised to 5 versus 1. I'll give you 5 seconds to pause and then pause the video. Okay, here we go. The key thing that we have to remind ourselves always when we take in the exam, when we come across quantitative comparison question, is to remind ourselves that these questions are called just that. These are called quantitative comparison, which is why we write down the word computation and we cross it out for emphasis to remind ourselves that these are not about computation. These questions are not called quantitative computation. These are called quantitative comparison. Our job is to compare the two quantities. Don't compute the bloody things. Do you understand? Here's what's going on. 10 raised to 5, 10 raised to 5 can be written as, 10 raised to 5 can be written as, 10 raised to 2 times 10 raised to 3. That's our 10 raised to 5. So here we have 10 raised to 3 on the top, we have 10 raised to 3 on the bottom. Divide top and bottom by 10 raised to 3. Divide the top and bottom by 1000, it goes away. What we end up is 10, n over 10 raised to 2. n over 10 raised to 2. n we know is 105 is 105.873, to which we're going to say the hell with it, we're going to pretend it's 106. Okay? So n is 106 divided by, divided by 100. 106 divided by 100, of course it's going to be more than 1. Of course this is going to be more than 1. Or if you want to be more dramatic, put it like this, of course it's going to be more than 1. 106 divided by 100 is more than 1 because 100, 106 is more than 100. Top is more than bottom. That's it. We're done. The answer is A. The answer is A. I'll see you tomorrow, okay?
Bye now.